I'm taking the cheapest flight every day for a week to see where I end up. And to make things interesting, I've set myself three challenges to complete along the way. After spending the past 24 hours in Rome, it was time to head to our seventh and final stop of this seven day journey. Let's go to a man. Before we get on with the rest of this video, I'm donating my hair to the Little Princess Trust Foundation which donates real hair wigs to children suffering with cancer and alopecia and invest in cancer research. So if you're watching the video on release, I'm doing it tomorrow. So I'll leave a link in the description below where you can donate and help out. Now let's get back to the video. Good morning, it is 3.30am and I'm on my way to the bus station to get the bus to the airport to catch me last of the seven flights. System provided. Please have your boarding pass and photo ID. This might be the most dead flight I've been on since COVID because there's about 20 people on the entire flight. We've made it to Oman, Jordan. This is my first time in the Middle East, so this is kind of exciting. But we need to go and get a visa and get through security. We're through security, I've got me visa but they did question me a little bit over my passport picture because it was from when i was like i don't know like 19 or something and now i've got long hair a beard and look not much like that at all so i had to kind of explain to them that that was me i've managed to make it to a man city center but i've been absolutely stung today first off i had to get cash out of the airport and i forgot my revolut card at home so i've been stung all week by charges on ATMs. I got charged six pounds today. And then the bus was like four pounds, which was fine, but it didn't bring me to the city centre. It took me to the bus station on the outside, about five kilometers away. And then I had to get a taxi in and I got charged 20 pounds for the taxi for five kilometers. Like 10 minutes of driving, 15 minutes of driving. Like it wasn't a lot of driving. And he, he charged me 20. I've just found that they do Uber here. And on the Uber app, the, the distance I travel was like, free jod and i paid 16 so i paid more than five times what i should have paid and it's annoying it is really annoying to be sung as a tour especially when i know that these traps happen and i just was caught off guard with the bus going like not to the city and i kind of didn't know uber existed here and stuff I, but it is what it is first things first we're gonna grab some food but like food to go because we don't have time to stop and eat and i have not eaten all day it's 4 p.m obviously the time difference is like three hours so really it's 1 p.m but still i've had no breakfast not and just a few nuts the food i bought is just a falafel wrap which is kind of cheating because Falafel isn't Jordanian, but it is Middle Eastern, and Jordan makes some of the best falafel in the world. So I'm kind of cheating. This is such a simple sandwich. Like it's not got much on. A little bit of veg, a little bit of chili sauce and tahini, and then some falafel. Nothing more. It's not. It's not too much. But honestly, this is incredible. This is such a nice, like falafel sandwich. And you see them making it fresh there in front of you. And he was he, he was making it quick as well. Hey, I'm not joking. That falafel wrap. It was one of the best falafel wraps I've ever had. It was so good, I'm going back for a second one because I'm starving. And it was 60p. You're not gonna find a, a better falafel wrap anywhere for 60p. I'm telling you that now. It's raining. Like, you couldn't write it. You couldn't make this up. Only, only I could have a week full of rain. Get to the Middle East thinking, oh, I'm gonna have some sun. And actually get rain instead. That only happens to me, that doesn't happen to anybody else. Right, so the first point of interest, which I wasn't meant to be, but I was walking up this hill and this old man told me to walk up and keep going and you'll see something amazing. Obviously he didn't, he didn't say it in English, but I got the gist. Look at that. It is a Roman amphitheater built in probably the second century AD and it is built into the side of the hill. Like, how incredible is that? Like, how well preserved is that? You can go inside, of course, but who needs to go inside when you can see all of it from here, from this vantage point? And, you know, you might think, looking at the Roman amphitheater, that's probably the oldest thing in this city because the Romans are pretty old, but you'd be wrong because this city is one of the oldest cities in the world, around 7,000 years old, and its oldest building is probably its citadel. 
Boy. Yeah. Boy. Boy. You want... And go left up uh, the stairs. Hey, it's better than you. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye. That was the guy I was telling you about. That old man was so so nice. I think he actually waited for me to catch up to him after I'd done videoing and taking pictures of the Roman Colosseum. Not Colosseum, sorry, amphitheatre. I think he just waited there for me to catch up to him so he could show me where to go. We are in the Citadel. Look at that with the sky, with the sun setting behind it and all the clouds from the storm run rolling in. It looks, it looks unbelievable. Now, a man has been ruled by dozens of empires throughout history, the Romans, the Byzantines, uh, the Ottoman Empire, I think. So the ruins are a mixture of all of those empires and what they built, but the oldest archeological sites date back to the Neolithic period, about 5,500 BC. So this is actually one of the oldest sites in the world, one of the oldest building sites in the entire world. This is actually a Roman temple, the Temple of Hercules, built to honour Hercules, the demigod in Roman mythology. The final part of the Amman Citadel that we're visiting is the Umayyad Mosque, which is the most intact part of the entire archaeological site. It actually looks like you could still use it today as a mosque if you wanted to, it's, it's so intact. There's a thunderstorm happening right through this door. I've just missed it then. Little there it is, right there. This is incredible. This is boss. This is such a... Right, look at this. Look how cool this looks. In a mosque on top of a hill in Oman. And I'm just watching a thunderstorm. This is so cool. Should we go into the dark room? Let's do it. Spooky and very echoey. It's actually quite warm in here. It's starting to get a little bit dark now, and I'm hungry again, so we're gonna go and find some food. I got this incredible vegan shawarma, which was huge and nearly too big to finish, from a place called Bite Sara, which is an independent restaurant that also has a local charity to help animals in the Oman area. I had an absolute stinker. I went back to the hostel and I fell asleep for like an hour. So the third and final point of interest I wanted to go to actually closed, but it is a mosque. So there's mosques everywhere in Oman and this one is supposedly a 24 hour mosque. Doesn't look as good. I mean, it looks amazing, but it doesn't look as good as the one I wanted to go to. But the reason that this is a point of interest is because I've never been to a mosque before. And obviously mosques and Islam is massive part of the culture here. So I've been to churches and and cathedrals all over the world but never a mosque that's what we're going to be doing that is the final point of interest if it's open we're going to be going in unfortunately it looks like it's closed and it was the only 24 hour mosque on google maps that i could find so it looks like we're not going to be going into the abu darwish mosque or into any mosque on this video because it is 11 p.m i am shattered and i need to go to sleep because tomorrow i am once again up at 5 a.m I would really appreciate it if you could like the video, comment on the video, share the video into your group chat of friends and subscribe if you're not already. And here from a man, remember, keep exploring.